Okay, so we're gonna go over some stitches. So here's my fabric, okay? And I, I lined up the edges so they are even and flush with one another. Now I'm going to pin them. Now remember, you pin it the edge of your fabric, um, the, the pin top will be to the right of it. Okay. So I'll just pin it and then I'll let you guys see it. And again, it is pinned right sides together. All right. So it's all pinned. All right. So permanent stitch you just want to um, place the fabric underneath your pressure foot okay and you want the needle to actually go down into fabric okay um, so just gauge it look at it into where it is going to be uh, actually going into the fabric and let's just do um let's see a half a, a half an inch which is on the outside lining up the edge of your fabric to the edge of your presser foot okay uh lower the presser foot bring the knee the hand wheel towards you which lowers uh the needle into the fabric now from here you want to hold on to the tail of your thread um, and you want to uh, turn the hand wheel towards you at least two times. I usually do it three times. So do it towards you. This is one, two. I'm going to remove my, I'm moving my hand so you can see, but usually you'll keep your hand here. Um, removing the needle. And this is three. Now on your machine, you have that back stitch. So hit the back stitch one time. Hit it one time again. One more time, as you went forward three times, you want to go back, uh, typically the same amount, but you can do less. Um, and then you want to just sew, keeping the edge lined up with the, e the edge of your fabric, lined up with the edge of your presser foot. Move my hands just so you can kind of see. So I'm just going to go a little bit faster. fabric try to get as close as you can to the edge of your fabric and you can also do that with your hand wheel as well so turn your hand wheel um, now you need to back stitch or reverse stitch at the end of your fabric too so that's one two three and then you can go forward uh, until you sew off your fabric okay turn the hand wheel towards you to the utmost position, uh, lift your uh, presser foot lever, pull your fabric away, cut, use your snippers or your scissors um, to cut, let me see if you can see it, cut the tail close to your fabric. Okay, you want to leave a good three to four inches um, of thread, of top thread uh, and, and bobbin thread on your machine, okay? And so that is the seam that we, we sewed, okay? Now remember, um, when you do a seam, you do what? You press that seam flat and then you open it up. Then you open it up and press the seam open. So every time you do that. So, but moving on. So that was just a permanent stitch, which is, I have mine on zero, zero, but it can be zero, one as well. And the stitch length is 2.5. So that's your permanent stitch. Back stitch is what we did at the beginning and at the end um, of the seam. Okay. And that's that going backwards. 
uh, three times, two or three times, and that's called either back stitch or reverse stitch. Um, basting is when you want to hold two pieces of fabric together, but just temporarily, because you don't want it to, to be there permanently. Um, so you're just holding there temporarily. So what you do is change the 2.5 to a five, um, or whatever the high, highest uh, stitch length is on your machine. So that's that top button that we went over. So I'm changing mine to a five. Um, putting uh, the needle down and I'll just sew a little bit here so you can see so and you do not back stitch um, or reverse stitch when you're doing basting because you want it to be easy to come out okay so that's it so that one uh, can just come you raise the needle to the highest raise your presser foot pull the threads and cut your threads close to your fabric so you can see the difference here one is a longer stitch length that is the 2.5 that's the 5 basting that's easier to, to come out now to also make your basting easier to come out you're going to cut your bobbin thread uh, in a few space in a few spots so all I'm doing is cutting my bobbin thread so just turn it over and cut your bobbin thread, you know, every inch or so. And so when you're ready to remove it, it'll come out nice and easy. So all I did was just snip the bobbin thread. Um, let's see, let's go on to zigzag. So zigzag on my machine is a number four. So remember the bottom buttons, uh, you get to select the type of stitch you want. So on mine, again, it's zero, it's zero four. So I leave that first knob at zero, change the second knob to four. Okay, so putting it down again, put the needle in, and I do that three times. One, that was one, two, three. Um, and right now it's at a 1.4. So let's say we want to increase the width. I'm sorry, the length is at 1.4, the width is at 3.5. So that's fine. So let's leave it at there. That's the standard. So let's see what that looks like. Now let's take the width down to a 2.5 so you can see what that looks like. it down to a 0 0.5 um, and then let's increase the length to a 2.5 and I want you to do this on your uh, on your sewing machine as well uh, do practice uh, sheets so you can actually see this so um, this one is for when we're doing a, um, when you sew it with knits that's the one that you would use, and this is called a narrow, a narrow seam. So let's see. So this first one is your standard one, and you can kind of use that, one, you know, if you want to do your, um, finish your seam allowance edges, you can use that one. Uh, so that was a 3.5 width. The middle one is a 2.5 width. And the one that you can probably hardly see, trying to get it where you can see it, um, that's your narrow, which is a 0 0.5 width and a 2.5 length. So your regular length, you know, that you use for a permanent stitch, but the width is very narrow. So that's at a, a 0 0.5. And what that does is just allows your fabric to stretch. So it won't pop when you put on your clothes there. Okay. Let's see what's next. Um, let's see. So two other terms that you know I would probably use from here is um, top stitch and edge stitch. Top stitch is is just whatever that seam is. So this is our seam. So when we open it, you know, that on the right side, that's what our seam would look like, right? 
Um, so, um, so top stitch is one, one quarter or one fourth uh, away from one fourth inch away from your seam line. So all you have to do is line up the edge, the inner edge of your presser foot along the seam line. Okay. And that will give you your one fourth. Oh, I think I'm still on the end. I'm still on that zigzag. Okay. So again, you're lining the seam line to the inner edge of your presser foot. And that gives you the one fourth seam allowance for your top, your top stitch. And then edge stitch is one eighth of an inch uh, away from the seam line. Okay. And so what I like to do is uh, usually your presser foot will come like with a little groove. So outline the seam line in the middle of that little groove. Okay. And lower my presser foot. Turn three times, two or three times. And start. So, so if you see that first line next to the, to the, so this is actually the seam line is here. Okay. That first stitch is the one eighth away from that seam line. And that's your edge stitch because you're very close to the edge of the seam, seam line. Your top stitch is one fourth away um from the seam line so again let me see if i can get my pressing foot off for you so i'm gonna show you so when you're doing see let me see if i can okay so going up here you see on the edge that's the inner edge. So you, um, for the one fourth top stitch, you use this inner edge side of the presser foot along this inner edge. And when you do your um, edge stitch, I have a little groove right there in the middle. It's like a little opening. So I'll put, um, I'll line up the seam line in the middle you know just within that little groove um and that will create that one eighth um of an inch so so again and if this looks familiar it should because that's uh usually how your jeans are uh the seam finish of your jeans looks like um it's usually top stitch and edge stitched and that's the way that looks all right, so that's it for stitches. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and hopefully you are enjoying these info sessions. Uh, and hopefully you are practicing at home yourself. Okay, bye-bye. Till next time, people.